So I got to prompt 12 and I wasn't recording. <laughs> so it's the first time that this has happened to me. I guess um, it had to happen eventually having a booktube channel. Uh, but yeah, I'm going to have to reveal all of them. Uh, so here it goes. <laughs> Hello everyone and welcome back to Mariana Mass Books. My name is Mariana and today I am here with the in or out tag. I was tagged to do this by Cassin at Always Doing. I was sort of tagged. I wasn't tagged during her video. She didn't tag me during her video, but um, I commented on her video that I really liked it and in her comments she told me consider yourself tagged so I am considering myself tagged and um, I told her and she agrees with me and she says that she officially tagged me even if it was in the comments so I am considering myself officially tagged and I am doing today the in or out tag. You are going to see throughout this tag that I am into every single cliche known to mankind and also i think this tag is very geared towards genre readers and i am a genre reader myself so today i am wearing my romance highland t-shirt okay the first prompt is reading the last page first i am completely utterly out i am 100 percent out on this one I am out for myself and I am out for anyone else who does this. Why? Why would you want to do this? Prompt number two is enemies to lovers. As I told you, I am into every single cliche or trope there is. So yes, I'm into enemies to lovers. I love the banter and the humor that generate from the enemies to lovers dynamic. Um, I also love friends to lovers, um, but enemies to lovers generates a very special dynamic that I really enjoy. The third prompt is dream sequences. I am into dream sequences. I have heard a lot of people call them gimmicky and maybe they are gimmicky but I am into gimmicky things. Um, I am a very easy to please reader and it is very easy for me to suspend my dis disbelief and it is very easy for me to put on my um, lenses depending on what type of book I'm reading. So if I'm reading a middle grade, I will put on my middle grade lenses. If I am reading a romance, I will put on my romance lenses. If I am reading a literary fiction, I will put on my literary fiction lenses. If I'm reading a fantasy and so on and so on, you get the idea. So um, each genre and each type of book has its own tropes, has its own gimmicky things, um, its own narrative styles, um, its own intent. Some books are meant to be entertaining, some books are meant to be informative, some books are meant to be beautiful, and it is easy for me to put on the lenses of whatever the book is trying to do, and it is very easy for me to uh, go with whatever the author is going for. Uh, as long as it's a, a book I'm interested in, obviously, a theme I enjoy, a genre I like, a plot I enjoy, characters I love, I'm a very character-driven uh, reader, as long as those things are true, as long as it's something I enjoy, I don't mind going along with whatever trope or gimmick uh, there is. Um, yes, sometimes you read dream sequences and you realize that uh, the author is just trying to shock you. And, I mean, you can either be shocked or not. It doesn't bother me that they are trying to do it. Um, the only time I have a problem with dream sequences or any other gimmick is when uh, the author is using them to get out of um, solving a plot point or solving something that they wrote themselves into that they don't know how to write themselves out of 
when it is very clear that it wasn't intentional from the author but it was a, a, um, a, an easy way out that's when it bothers me other than that i really I, I either i enjoy them or they don't bother me um a book i can think of that i read this year and that i don't necessarily recommend the book but it has an excellent excellent dream sequence that really shocked me and that i don't think i have ever read a better dream sequence than that um it is the days of the deer by liliana bodoc which i read in january as i said i didn't love the book but that scene that dream sequence has stuck with me so that's one where i could think of a very very good dream sequence the next prompt are love triangles no <laughs> i am out on love triangles maybe it's uh surprising because i said i'm into every single cliche and i enjoy romance i love romance <laughs> but i am out on love triangles not because they are overdone or overused or whatever but because they are too angsty for me whenever there is a love triangle i have a very clear preference i have a favorite i have someone in mind that i would like the main character to end up with and it is too stressful for me to read a book without and just wonder who is uh, or who are they going to choose uh, or are they going to go for my option or not it's too stressful i don't like it so no i don't like love triangles <laughs> the next prompt is cracked spines and this one cracks me up <laughs> because i don't i'm neither in nor out I don't read a book and purposefully try to crack its spine, but I also don't purposefully try to not crack its spine. And it baffles me that there are people that read their books like this so the spine doesn't crack. I don't, I'm neither in nor out. The next prompt is back to my small town in, yes, please i love uh, well uh, i can only think of romances with this uh trope i i don't think i've ever read anything other than a romance that is back to my small town but i love a good small town romance i love the cheesiness of the going back to your small town and falling in love with your best friend from high school yes i mean i love it i'm in every time i say i mean which <laughs> I mean I'm in, I think <laughs> that you will think I'm saying I mean. Did, I ma did that make sense? No, probably not. Anyway, moving on, next prompt. <laughs> the next prompt is monsters are regular people. Yes, 100% in. My favorite genre or subgenre is urban fantasy i love urban fantasy so any book that will have a, a twilighty type plot not necessarily romantic but in the sense of magical creatures being in the real world yes i am so in i also like it when it's metaphorical but i love it when it is literal no paragraph breaks i'm out i mean generally i'm out on this when there are no paragraph breaks you feel like you're not moving forward in the book so i'm ge generally i'm out but also for some reason i really really want to read doc's newbury part multi-generational sagas no i am out on this one <laughs> i think it's because i like speculative fiction or history either speculative or historical i tend to stay away from anything contemporary and multi-generational sagas i feel like always tend to lean towards the 
contemporary aspect even if I know that by definition multi-generational means that uh, there are generations past which would make it historical but there is also the, there is always the, com the, the contemporary component of the present generation uh, looking back and uh, I don't know the only time I'm interested in contemporary is when there is a theme I like or I'm interested in so for example if there is a journalist or if there is a library or an archivist or that type of plot that type of plot I like but in general I am out on multi-generational stuff the next is rereading and yes I mean I'm in <laughs> I um I don't reread really a lot of books like whole books, but I do like to reread uh, favorite passages from books I like. And actually, this year I've been re doing a lot of rereading. So yeah, I mean, I mean, artificial intelligence. Yes, I am in. I cannot think of a book I've read that focuses on artificial intelligence other than the first two books in the murder but um, diaries so I I can't think of an example but in, in in as a concept I'm in the next prompt is drop caps I love drop caps and I not only love reading books with drop caps I studied graphic design in university and when I took the editorial design course and we would design books I would always use drop caps in the books that I designed. I love drop caps. The next one is happy endings. Well, what would you expect from a romance reader? Yes, I love happy endings. I don't require a happy ending. In gen I mean, obviously in a romance you require a happy ending, but other types of books I don't require a happy ending, but I do enjoy happy endings. I don't think there's anything wrong with happy endings. I don't understand people that look down upon happy endings as if it was less of uh, like less literature. I I don't get it. like what's wrong with a happy ending if the book like the narrative is giving towards a sad ending and then a happy ending is added just because well then I uh, no I don't like that but if the book has a happy ending that feels organic to the story why not i love a good happy ending plot points that only converge at the end yes i love it i love books like that this year i can think of amber and clay by laura amy Schlitz, which i have mentioned in i think almost every single video in my channel because i love that book the the plot points converge at the end in a very good way yeah i love plot points that converge at the end detailed magic systems I'm in I think I don't know if I've ever read a book that has a very detailed magic system or if I have then I don't know what a detailed magic system exactly means um, but it sounds like something I would be into classic fantasy races elves dwarves that type of thing i'm in yes i like a book with dragons or uh, mages or elves or and if it is a fantasy romance and it is like a romance with elves or fairies or yes please i love it <laughs> unreliable narrators yes i am in Again, I can. I feel like for every single prompt, I am in, but I also can't think of an example. But yeah, I like a good or reliable narrator. Evil protagonists. For this, I am going to give the same answer that Rick Mark Donnell, the creation, the creator of this tag, um, gave in his video. Yes, when it is that you originally thought that they were good or they were the heroes and then they turn out to be the evil ones and you have been rooting for them all along and and then it turns out it's a villain then i really like it the chosen one 
I enjoy when it is not a chosen one plot like I enjoy when in a book that would traditionally be a chosen one trope it's not but I also don't mind when it is so I enjoy both things when the protagonist dies I am on board as long as it's not just for the sake of it as long as it's not the author killing the main character just to add a shock factor which I know is contradicting myself from other answers I've given but I swear I understand myself inside my brain I'm making sense so <laughs> I I I'm on board with the main character dying dying if it makes sense for the narrative if it makes sense for the story if it's only done to shock with the reader then I don't like it really long chapters I will say I'm out because I prefer medium sized chapters I also don't like super short short chapters when the cha all the chapters are just like three pages long I don't like it but when they are like a hundred pages long I, I also don't like it <laughs> so I might say I'm out but yeah, I will not read a book just because it has long chapters even if I preferred medium sized chapters French flaps this is so funny to me because <laughs> everyone loves French flaps and everyone shows off when their books have French flaps and I didn't know that French flaps were a thing until I started watching booktube because here in Mexico almost all the books have French flaps so for me French flaps are super normal like every book has French flaps I even have um, I, I grabbed some books from my bookshelf just to show you how common it is that books have um, French flaps here in Mexico <laughs> I, I don't know I don't think it's just Mexico I probably like in general Spanish speaking um, a lot of the books are in Mexico come from editorials from Spain so maybe Spain also has French flaps but books are very commonly um, they, they very commonly have French flaps oh my god I mean I, I think you get the point I can't uh, okay yeah so this this would be like a fancy book because it's a big fr big French flap, but it, it doesn't have to be a fancy book. This one, for example, is a, a book by Alfaguara, which is a super common like it can't get more common than an Alfaguara paperback, and it has French flaps. French flaps are so common, in fact that we use them as bookmarks so when for example when my dad doesn't have a book my dad never has a bookmark he, my dad he doesn't use bookmarks he uses the french flaps to mark where he is in the book so he um all his books will look something like this hold on a second they will look like this because he uses the french flap as a bookmark and that is very common it's a very common thing to do i personally don't do it because i love bookmarks and i have a collection of bookmarks and i don't like how the pages bend when you use the french flap as a bookmark but a lot of people use them as, as bookmarks because they are so common so to sum up i prefer a book without french flaps because french flaps are so common if that makes sense because they are so common i like it when they are not i feel like french flaps make a book on floppy and i like floppy books so yeah and decaled edges i enjoy the look of decaled edges but i don't I'm not crazy about them either way like I'm not crazy in or crazy out if they're there they are there if they're not they're not and it's fine signed copies by the author I'm in I think in my last tag video the last 10 books I told you how we don't have many literary events where I live 
with authors that I would be interested to take for a signing but if I had um, I don't know if I had a copy of a, a really special book um, I, I mean I, I can't go get my my Lord of the Rings copy signed because J.R.R. Tolkien is no longer alive but I would love to have a signed copy of the Lord of the Rings two more prompts to go <laughs> dog earring pages I am not out I wouldn't say I'm in because I prefer tabbing a book with sticky tabs um, than doing dog ears but I will do a dog ear when I don't have a sticky tab or when I can't find my bookmark um, and the book doesn't have a French flap <laughs> and I don't mind a book that has a tiny uh, folding marks from dog ears in general I like books that look used but I, I, I'm not in just because I prefer other methods for marking pages but I'm not out because I will do it and it doesn't bother me if someone else does and finally chapter titles instead of numbers yes I love chapter titles I especially love when they are creative chapter titles or when maybe there are I don't know lines from a song or from a poem or that type of thing where the chapter title is a reference that adds to the story I really enjoy that so that was it this was a harder time than I thought it would be I thought it would be really quick to film but it actually took a while firstly because of uh, filming half of it without pressing record and secondly because I just I talk too much so <laughs> anyway i hope you enjoyed this tag thank you so much to kassen at always doing for tagging me in her comments i will see you next thursday in the meantime i hope you have a good week and happy reading